family? Good morning. Welcome to worship at Bethlehem United Methodist Church. It's a joy, as always, to see everybody out here this morning. Beautiful, beautiful day today. We have a lot of fun things that are going to happen here. In addition to God sweeping in the room here in worship, we're going to have uh, new members joining today. We're celebrating graduates. Uh, the praise band's only here once a month, so the praise band happens to be here today. Um, so I'm glad that you're here for all of these good things. A few things I want to just lift up before we begin. We have um, sign-in pads there at the center aisle. Please be sure to sign in. Let us know you're here, whether you're new, whether you're visiting, whether you're a regular. We just want to know that you're here. Hi, Susan. Welcome. She didn't see me, and Audrey's here too. Um, the other thing, along in those pew sign-up sheets are these little encouragement cards. These are here for your use during worship. Sometimes a name will pop into your head or a prayer request or somebody that you're thinking about and you want to connect with them and let them know that maybe they're missed or that you're praying for them. Use these cards. Uh, they're for you to, to write on, to mail to them. If it's somebody that you know we have the address, you can drop them in the offering plate after worship and we will mail them for you. So these encouragement cards are, are great to have. So pick one up if you want when the little clipboard goes by. Thank you also for wearing your name tags. I see we're getting really good at that. If you need your name tag, uh, I need a new one, or if you are a new person who's come to us and you plan on coming back, we want you to have a name tag. Doug, where's your, oh, there he is. That's okay, you can do that. No one will notice it's the wrong one. I've done that before. Uh, but there are little green forms out on the welcome desk. If you need a name tag, please, please sign up for that. And if you're here for the first time, we welcome you. We're so happy that you're joining us. And we have a gift for you out on the welcome table after worship. Uh, two other announcements I want to lift up. There is a special called charge conference on May 31st at 4 o'clock p.m. Uh, it's really concerning the administrative board, but we need to announce this. It has to do with administrative details for our new pastor coming. So Mark your calendars for May 31st. I believe it will be a Zoom charge conference. Uh, also on June the 5th, that's Pentecost Sunday, we're going to be starting a new small group study during the Sunday school hour. It's going to be hosted by the Green Team, so look for more information on that in the buzz. And then also, the harvest table is open. Did vegetables magically appear? I love it when that happens. <laughs> So after worship, you can get some veggies outside at the harvest table. This is a place where people who are gardening at home bring their bounty and share with congregation. So feel free to take what you like. There's also a table for sign-ups for Vacation Bible School out there, too. Uh, that's another fun event coming up in July. But as we begin worship, I'm going to invite you to stand as you are able. And we're going to open up with a, an old Methodist hymn, one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> Open my eyes that I may see, but it's going to sound a little different. So I invite you to sing with us and enjoy the band's rendition of Open My Eyes. Ready? Mm hmm.
invite you to join with me uh, with the words on the screen to our opening prayer. Holy One, mold our worship with your tender hands so that the words of our mouths and the whispers of our hearts find their way to you. So shape us our celebration with your gracious touch that our prayers find a home with you and our songs bring you joy. Form this service and our lives into an acceptable offering of thanksgiving and witness. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Good morning. I'm Billy Jean Elmer, and I'm with the higher education group of our church, and I bring great joy to you today as we celebrate with our graduates. We have four seniors, um, that are graduating or have graduated from college. And the first one we're gonna highlight is Ashley Settle. She is, has graduated from Liberty University. Uh, some of you may know her, she was Gail Alp's granddaughter, or is Gail Alp's granddaughter. <laughs> she graduated in bio, uh, biomedical science, and you can see her future plans, um, you know, that's pretty heavy stuff as far as I'm concerned. So uh, we're excited to celebrate with Ashley. Our next uh, graduate is Kelly Richardson. And Kelly, um, for those of you that don't know, the Higher Education Committee nurtures our college students by keeping contact with them each month. We send them a card or a package, or sometimes we text and send them things. Well, I have to admit that those that go to Virginia Tech get just a little bit more nurturing than others. <laughs> And so she's graduating in December, and I told her, boy, I'm really glad you're gonna be there in the fall so we can tailgate together one more semester. So, so she is graduating in engineering, and uh, this summer she has a really great internship in Tennessee. So we're really excited about that. She couldn't be with us here today because the next slide, her sister graduated yesterday. And so we're very excited. They're all celebrating in Fairfax County. Uh, she will be trying to find a job instead of going to graduate school. So we're very excited for Shannon, uh, who is at George Mason University. And then our fourth college student is Lauren Whitmer. And she graduated from Bridgewater College. And she had um, a research part, uh, uh, project with the National Institute of Health this last year. So she has really done some really great things as well. She's on several waiting lists for medical school. So we're very excited for her to continue on her education and take care of us or, or maybe our <laughs> grandchildren if she goes into pediatrics. We have a chair for each of our college students and uh, with it is um, scripture from Ephesians that says, wherever you go, I may also go with you. So we want them to always remember us and that we are with them wherever they go. Also in the bag is a bag from the green team, another little gift, and so we're just excited to share with them. Usually we have colors of their college. This year everybody gets blue, so that's okay. <laughs> and so I'm gonna turn it over to Megan. We also have two high school graduates that we're recognizing today. First is Channing. So Channing, if you wanna come up front. This is Amber and Marlon's son, Channing. And Channing's graduating from Stanton River High School, and he came this morning to share a little bit about his plans after graduation. Hi, I'm Channing. Um, I'll be attending Columbia College, Chicago to study comedy writing. And if you happen to bring your grandchildren or your children or your family to the arcade this summer, you'll probably see Channing there working at Bridgewater or you've seen him recently. So we have a bag for you with a Bible and uh, this is a beautiful quilt that Sue Whitney made for you with uh, wonderful soccer stuff on it for you to take to school with you. Thank, Thank you. you, Channing. Our second high school graduate is Ryan Stevenson, and that name may not sound familiar to you if you're not associated with the preschool. Ryan Stevenson, or Ms. Ryan as the students call her, is our assistant in our extended day program at Bethlehem Preschool. So she leaves the Stanton River High School at noon every day and comes here and works with our students from 1230 to 4. 
and her plans are to go to Central Virginia Community College and still work here next year in the afternoons in our extended day. So our students love her, and we are happy to recognize her even though she's with her home church at Palestine today. She has been a great part of our ministry to students this year, and so we are proud of her, we're proud of Channing, and we're proud of all of our graduates, whether they're here with us today or are worshiping from home. So thank you all for being part of their lives and for ministering to them throughout their years. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you for our graduates, for our college graduates and our high school graduates. May you watch over them and guide all of their steps from here forward. That you guide their plans, whether that's school or work or finding where they are in our world, that you will watch over them and guide them and help them to find who they are in your world and in your story and in your plan. We thank you for their lives. We thank you for their families. May you watch over moms and dads and grandparents as their children step out into the unknown, that you watch over them and guide their hearts as well. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you all. Oh, we do? Oh, silly. My goodness, how could I forget our wonderful pre-K graduates? Thank you. Sorry, Billie Jean, it just <laughs> leapt out of my brain. But we have 10 wonderful preschool graduates, our pre-K class that is graduating this year. Yes, and... <laughs> you know, this graduating class has been through a lot, just like our seniors that are graduating from college and high school this uh, pre-K class has been through pandemic and masks and changing school and school from home, and we're super proud of them and all the things that they are going to do. We have, uh, you see Spencer in the top, so that's Susan and Spencer's grandson, some of our, our students that are part of our, our church home here. So we're thankful for our wonderful pre-K class and what they're going to do in the world, too. Right. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> Amen. And that graduation for the pre-K is Thursday, right? Thursday evening. So we look forward to that. And uh, congratulations to all of these. Aren't you proud of all of those? And Channing, well, you're going to be in our prayers as you head to Chicago. And um, you've been, you and your sister have been, we remember when you were, well, I'm not going to say. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you, you've been here through a lot. So, but uh, thank you. Um, welcome to all. Welcome to those worshiping online. We welcome guests that we have with us today. Uh, it is a, a pleasure to be together on this beautiful, um, warm, sunny morning and to have some uh, first-time guests with us. Glad you are here. Um, I do want to move us to our time of prayer and to mention um, a, a woman who many of you may know, particularly if you live in Mountain View Shores. Her name is Susan um, Hohenbrink. And she cut Cheryl's hair. She may cut your hair. She's a you know a wonderful person. I met her recently. Just a really kind um, person who has her own ministry, and she um, had a heart attack this past weekend and will be undergoing um, open heart surgery uh, either tomorrow or Tuesday, um, possibly a full way bypass. So let's remember her in our prayers, and um, I know there are others on our hearts and minds, particularly people of Ukraine, we want to continue to, to pray for them uh, and uh, pray for an end to the war. Uh, we are thankful for new members. We are grateful for all the, the, the new chapters in lives that people are experiencing in graduation or even our pre-K class. That's really exciting to uh, see them grow during the year and to be with them and to prepare them for kindergarten coming up and, and uh, just uh, new things happening. So uh, I'd like to move us to our, our time of prayer as we sing together sanctuary. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Let's sing with our band as um, we prepare for prayer. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary.
Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. Loving God, we're very thankful to be here on this Sunday morning where we can join our friends, our brothers and sisters in Christ, not only here at Bethlehem, but around the world as people gather to worship. We pray that this service will bring you joy. May it honor you. May it please you as we turn our, our eyes and our thoughts upon you and allow you to be within us to open up and be that sanctuary for you so thank you for your spirit that is here that we sense already that we know that you love us and care for us and are with us throughout all of life from beginning to end and into eternity thank you for these um, young men and women that uh, have studied and moving into new chapters and new places of either study or work and so do bless them, we pray. Uh, prepare the way for them, keep them safe. And may they grow in their knowledge and love of you and um, find your way. So we ask God that you would be with those who are hurting today. We pray for those who are sick, those who are facing surgery, those recovering, those who are in rehab. We pray for those who have COVID. We ask God that you would heal them and Keep them from getting too sick. We do pray for our nation as we grieve the loss of over a million. And we ask God that you help us as we move forward. So thank you for this time with each other and this time with you. We pray for the person sitting beside us right now. We lift them up to you, those around us. We ask God that your will be done in their lives. Draw us all closer to you and closer to each other as we seek to be the people that you call us to be through the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask this in the strong name of Jesus, the one who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Once again, thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Gracious God, we are thankful for all we have in life, recognizing that all things come from you. And we ask, God, that you bless these gifts, that you multiply them and use them for the glory of your kingdom and the work of your church here on earth. We pray in your name. Amen. As an offertory, we're going to sing a hymn, and we'd like for you to sing with us. You're welcome to remain seated. It's from the Green Book, the Worship and Song Book, number 3164. Uh, I think you will know it. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, brothers, let's go down, down in the river 
to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. All oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. All oh, sinners, let's go down, down in the river to pray. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from John chapter 14, and I'll begin reading at verse 23. Jesus answered, whoever loves me will keep my word. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever doesn't love me doesn't keep my words. The word that you hear isn't mine. It is the word of the Father who sent me. I have spoken these things to you while I'm with you. The companion, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I give to you not as the world gives. Do not be troubled or afraid. You've heard me tell you I'm going away and returning to you. If you loved me, you would be happy that I'm going to the Father, because the Father is greater than me. I've told you before it happens, so that when it happens, you will believe. This is the word of God for you and me, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Thank you very much. Beautiful song. Let's pray. And that is our, our prayer, O oh Lord, that you would, through your Spirit, shape us, mold us, make us, lead us, guide us, create us into your image to be like Christ in this world. And I ask now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. For the past weeks, uh, we've been looking at both the Gospel lesson, which has been from John's Gospel, and then also the New Testament lesson, which has been from the Acts of the Apostles, which is um, often called the Acts of the New Testament, because uh, early on in Acts, which was written by uh, Luke, the same author of the Gospel of Luke, so it's Luke Acts. Um, second chapter describes the infilling of the Holy Spirit upon those believers as they were in that upper room together, and there was a rushing mighty wind and flames of fire. And I think I've been saying that uh, Pentecost is next Sunday, but it's not. It's two weeks from today, the 5th. Um, so get your red shirt ready. Even though we have moved out of the parsonage and into a new place, I know where my red shirt is. I may not know where anything else is, but I know where the red shirt is. I'm going to wear that on um, Pentecost. Red pyramids, red banners, um, reminders of the power of the Holy Spirit that came upon them. And so... We're reading Acts, and I'll, although we didn't read it from, um, from the Scripture today, I'll, I'll tell you that story from Acts 16 that is the companion to the Gospel of John. But I'm going to start with, with John's Gospel because it um, kind of continues where Jesus um, was speaking to the disciples, preparing them for His departure. And if you remember, uh, I, we mentioned how chapters 14, 15, 16, and 17 of John's Gospel are known as Jesus' farewell discourse, or the words that he shared with them uh, before his own death and the kind of the, the culmination of his ministry on earth. And I've always thought, and I think I said this in the buzz on Tuesday, it's important to pay attention to last things that people say. And you recall last week, Jesus said to his disciples, I give you a new commandment, which we're sure got their attention. Now, what is this new commandment? And again, it's not a suggestion. It's not a recommendation. It's not, you know, consider doing this perchance if you like. It is none of those things. It is a new commandment that has an expectation that we do it. And so they're listening, and we're listening too, and Jesus says, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. As I have loved you, so shall you love one another. This is how others will know that you're my disciples, as you have love for one another. Very important that we love as Jesus loves Jesus was once asked, what is the greatest commandment? What is most important in life? And his answer was fairly quick. 
The greatest commandment, he said, is loving God with your whole being, your heart, soul, mind, and strength. He says, and the second is like it, love others as you love yourself. And again, we're not talking about romantic love per se, although last night at the um, concert, and thank you United Women of Faith for putting that on, we had a good attendance, and there was a couple of songs where people got up and danced, and I, I actually have a video, kind of panned the room, there was about 12 couples dancing in a Methodist church, they were dancing. <clears throat> And enjoying themselves together. And, uh, and I, I noticed particularly, uh, and they were here in the early service, uh, Chuck and Doris Newdorfer, who are both, you know, well in their 80s. And I asked Chuck how long they had been married. And he said, 62 years. And here they are. Um, and I always comment about Chuck and Doris when we had ushers that would come down to take the offering. They always came hand in hand, you know. And it wasn't just for stability. It was because they, they, they love each other, been together for all these years. And, and so that's the kind of love where we're talking about, not just romantic love, but commitment kind of love. Commitment to, to God, commitment to others, commitment to give our lives in love to a friend, to a spouse, to a family member, to a loved one, to your church, to your community, to your nation, to our God, who has our ultimate allegiance. So, in our scripture today, which chapter 14 of John's Gospel, and I suspect I probably read John 14 more than any other passage ever, because at every memorial service, every funeral, I read John 14. I can quote most of it. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places, many mansions, and I go in to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will receive you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. But he continues, and further down, he answers, whoever loves me will keep my word. My Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever doesn't love me doesn't keep my words. The word that you hear isn't mine. It is the word of the Father who sent me. In other words, Jesus is moving us beyond just saying that we love God or that we love others. It's easy to say it. It's a whole other thing to live it out, to, to do it. But Jesus' expectation is that we do love that we act on our love. You know, a couple of weeks ago was Mother's Day. And I have to confess, Mother's Day kind of got by me with all the things that we're involved in and packing up and getting, you know, getting rid of things and getting ready for the, the move that happened this past Tuesday. And, and um, so Mother's Day kind of came and went. I did text my sisters and, and we remembered our mom who, uh, by the way, my sisters are coming on the 19th. I'm looking forward to seeing them both. I've not seen either of them since my mother's, our mother's funeral, which was two and a half years ago. And so the last time um, uh, we kind of were all together was um, when my mother and my sisters came here. I think it was 2011 because we were doing the construction. I have a picture of... Um, my mother and then Laura and Linda and Cheryl together. And I was thinking about my mom just recently because I didn't think about her a lot around Mother's Day. But my mom was a very practical woman, very strong woman. She was very honest about things and she would tell you what she thought. And many of the things that she taught me, even from a young age, are still with me. I still remember even 60 years ago, you know, her sharing with me this particular saying that has stayed with me. David, actions speak a whole lot louder than words. Have you ever heard that one? Or something like it, right? In other words, you know, you can't just say, Mom, I love you. Well, good, go clean up your room like I asked you to do, you know. Actions speak louder than words. Scripture just assumes that we know that. 
That we can't just simply say we love God or that we love others and then that not be lived out, that that not be followed by action. Um, James, I think we did a study of James or a sermon series on James last summer. And I remember James is very plain spoken about this. And this was James, the brother of Jesus, another son of, of Mary. And James said, if you <clears throat> say you love God, but then don't do anything about someone who's hungry or, or in need of clothing, if you just say, you know, blessings upon you, brother, go your way. He said, what good is that? In fact, he said, that's not faith, that's dead faith. And that's pretty plain spoken, isn't it? That if you aren't living your faith, if your faith doesn't impact your action of how you are with God and with others, then you may need to take a second look at your faith. It may be non-existent. And so Jesus is saying the same thing here in saying that, Whoever loves me will keep my word. Things that he had said to do. His teaching. And then he goes on to mention that, you know, this is not just something that, that you have to do on your own. That this is not something that Jesus... You never see Jesus call somebody to follow him and say, come follow me, you're on your own. He never said that. In fact, none of us are on our own. He has promised up to this point the promise of the Father, the coming of the Holy Spirit. And he's saying here it's even good that he goes away. And we heard this before when he said, you'll do the things that I've done, you'll do even greater things than I've done when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. He says, I've spoken these things to you while I'm with you, but the companion the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of everything I told you. The companion. Now, that's another word for par parakletos is the Greek word. And parakletos gets translated companion or um, counselor, comforter. Uh, the literal translation is one who comes alongside, an, an advocate. One who is there for you. So he's saying, God will send this companion, this friend, this teacher, this one who will lead and guide and direct you as the song reminds us to shape us and to lead us where we're to go. What we're to do, how we are to be. And will give us the power to do that. Don't go anywhere, Jesus said. Stay here in Jerusalem. Wait for the power from on high. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and throughout the world. But wait. And they did. They waited for the Holy Spirit to come. And it came like a mighty rushing wind. It filled that house. Flames of fire rested upon them. And they began to speak in other languages that people understood. So, the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. That was the beginning of the church. And if you recall, Paul was an ambassador to the Gentiles. One who would take the the gospel to the Gentile world, the non-Jewish world. And so an example of this is for our passage out of Acts, and it's Acts chapter 16. And up until this point, Paul, who was taking the gospel to the Gentiles, had stayed pretty much, and in fact exclusively, in Asia. Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey, Syria, Lebanon, Israel, modern day. He had established churches beginning Antioch and throughout going and preaching to the Gentiles and starting congregations. And it was his plan to return eastward, to go back to visit those churches again, to strengthen them, to teach them, to help them grow. But he says the Spirit kept preventing him. And then he has this vision, this vision about 
going over to Europe. That wasn't his plan to go to Europe. It was his plan to stay in the east. In fact, to go back east. But this vision was of a person, a man, saying, come over here, come to Europe, come help us. Help us in our need. So he had this vision. Now I can understand why Paul maybe didn't want to go to Europe because that meant closer to Rome. And closer to Rome meant Roman culture, Roman you know, military, Roman uh, politics, Roman government, Roman temples. Maybe he would be more successful, he thought, if he stayed in the East. But then there was this vision. Come over and help us. Come to Europe. Cross over. <clears throat> so Paul, in this vision, did. He, he did what he said. And he went over. And he went to the place called Philippi. Philippi was a Roman colony. And that was primarily... Um, People living there were Roman um, retired military and they were um, Roman citizens. It was like a little Rome, Philippi was. It was on the Ignatian Way. It was a major trade route. They had a Colosseum. They had a, a theater, a forum. They, it, was, it was Roman. Roman religion, Roman culture. And Paul went there to Philippi after having this vision. Now you might <coughs> say... Where are those visions now? I don't see anybody having visions. Well, maybe we do. Well, we read about a vision last week, didn't we? <clears throat> Simon Peter was um, in Joppa, and he has this vision. And the vision is of these animals that kind of come down in the sheet from heaven and in it are unclean animals that are forbidden by Leviticus 11 in terms of eating these unclean animals. No shellfish, no shrimp, no pork barbecue, no lobster dipped in butter. You know, <clears throat> none of these. And, and the word was three times to him, Peter, kill and eat. And he said, no, Lord, I'm not going to do that from my birth. I was raised not to do that. It's in Leviticus. I'm not going to break the law. The law says not to do that. And the word of God said, Peter, do not consider unclean what I have considered clean. And three times. And then it went back up into heaven. And immediately someone showed up at his door. It was these Gentiles, these non-Jewish people. And they took him to Caesarea, to the house of Cornelius, who was a Roman centurion, all Gentiles. And again, up to this point, the understanding was that anybody who wanted to be a follower of Jesus had to first become Jewish, which meant had to be circumcised, keep the law, keep kosher, keep the Sabbath laws. But here, as Peter was talking to the house of Cornelius, the Holy Spirit came upon them just like it had on the day of Pentecost. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they were baptized and they came to become followers of Christ. And when Peter returned to Jerusalem and shared with them, they said, well, how can we get in the way of this? Is this if this is what God is doing, bringing the word of God to the Gentiles and saving them, we can't get in the way of that. But it all came from that vision. So here Paul is having a vision that again changed the course of the church. Had Peter not had that vision of, of, of what had happened at Cornelius' house and how that happened, Christianity would have remained just a sect of Judaism and we may never have heard of Jesus. It just would have been a sort of an, an offshoot of, of Judaism. But it was God's plan that salvation not just be for Jews, but for the whole world. Jews and non-Jews alike. And for Paul, not just Asia, but Europe as well, and the whole of the world. And so we had this vision. Do we have visions? Well, I'm thinking back of 2008, 9, 10, when we began to pray as a church, Lord, give us a vision. Give us a vision to know what direction to go, where to look, 
how to, how to proceed here. Because we had that question of, Lord, give us a vision for our church. And we began to pray and we organized around prayer. and We, we listened and we waited. And God revealed to us a vision that was outward focused. Where our sights would not just be on ourselves, but be on others. Our sights, first of all, on God, loving God but also loving others as we love ourselves. Did you know on the wall that's behind me here in the Welcome Center is our vision statement? Have you noticed it? Notice it sometimes. It says our vision, outward bound, together with Christ renewing our spirits, we seek to make a difference in our world through the power of the Holy Spirit for the sake of the kingdom. It's a little long, but you get the idea. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we're making a difference in the world around us that we see, the needs around us, tangibly putting our words into action. Not just saying we love God and others, but acting on it, doing love, loving those in need. So he went to Philippi. Philippi is a Roman city. Obviously, not even enough people there or Jews there to have a synagogue. You need 10 men, 10 families to have a synagogue. And there was none there. So he went down to the river to pray <laughs> because that's what you did on the Sabbath because there was no synagogue. And typically Paul would go to the synagogues and would teach there and, and be able to tell people about Christ. But he went down to the water, and we get it, because water, there's something special about water, right? Something spiritual about being on the lake, about being by our river or the waterfall. Water's a baptism, a mikvah. It's all water is, means life. You can go several weeks probably without eating, but you can only go several days without water. Water is life-giving. And so... It was a place of prayer, and there were these Gentile women that were there. One was by the name of Lydia, and Lydia was wealthy, and we know that because she was a seller of purple. And purple was only royalty had purple. That's why you only see royalty wearing purple, or the very rich. And so she was a person of means, and ministry needs people with means to support it. Financially, like Jesus had followers, particularly women that supported him financially. And she was listening to what Paul was saying as he talked about this Jesus of Nazareth, who was the Messiah, the Christ who had come. And she believed. And she invited him and his group to stay with her in her home, maybe a villa of homes. And that was quite something for Paul, Saul, who was this Pharisee, you know, kind of, um, you know, strict Jew, talking to a woman, staying in the home of a Gentile, staying with her. Now, a lot of times, I think we have plans, kind of like Simon Peter had his idea of things and the way they should go, you know, Christ for the Jewish people only. Paul had his idea, stay in Asia Minor, stay in Asia, go back to the east. God had other ideas. The gospel for the whole of the world. The gospel for all of Europe and all of the world. But I can't help but wonder, how many of us have had experience where we wanted to do one thing or go a certain direction or head in one way? We had our, our plans, but those plans got changed. The Spirit prevented Paul from going back east, but the Spirit called him to go west. Sometimes when things aren't working out a certain way, it's like the Spirit is drawing us a different way. And look what happened. How the church grew in Europe, in Philippi. Lydia was the first convert in all of Europe. The first church was formed in Philippi. Paul stayed there. He established a church. He taught. He strengthened it. From there, other churches 
were planted and grew. And though there's change happening right around us, change that's happening in people's lives like Channing and other graduates with their beginning new chapters, change and new chapters are happening for Bethlehem as well. But we can know that the Holy Spirit, this comforter, this counselor, this companion will lead and guide and direct and empower and provide what you need to move into the future and to do the will of God. Why? Because God loves you and as you love God in return and as you love one another, God will bless you as a congregation. God will move you forward and show you those directions, show you the way, show you His will through the Holy Spirit who lives in you. Our role is to open ourselves up, to welcome the Holy Spirit, to say, Lord, here we are. Fill us, we pray. Paul said, be filled with the Spirit, meaning over and over and over. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Will you pray with me? Thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit who empowers us, who comforts us, who is our companion, who is the, the part of God who lives in us and with us and through us that makes a difference in this world. So come, we pray, fill us today, and then send us forth ready to be the church in love and in power. We pray this in your name. Amen. I'm going to ask the VZs to come forward. And the VZs are um, joining the church today by way of transfer of membership from um, Aldersgate UMC. And um, if you would, as a congregation, please turn to page 38. I'm going to ask you to follow. And there really is one question since these guys are coming by way of transfer from a United Methodist Church. And uh, after the question is asked and answered, uh, I'll invite them to face you as a congregation and I'll introduce you to them and you can welcome them. There's words for you to say. So on page 38 in the hymnal, David and Elizabeth uh, as members of Bethlehem, coming while transferring into Bethlehem. Will you faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, say I will. Face the congregation. This is short and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Members of the household of God, I commend Elizabeth and David to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. Please join me. We, we give, give thanks, thanks for, for all that, that God has already given you, and, and we, we welcome, welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Um, I'm going to offer this benediction to you. The God of all grace who has called us to eternal glory in Christ establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. And following our closing uh, hymn and the benediction, I'm going to ask Elizabeth and David to stand with me out in the welcome area. And I want you all to come by and welcome them to Bethlehem. Susan, would you like to welcome them? All right. All right. <laughs> I'll let Susan introduce the final hymn. You can be seated. Yeah, I'm going to invite you all to stand. This final hymn, I love it. I love it, love it. I just, you're going you're gonna to feel it. You, if you want to sway, just start swaying. It's really this beautiful hymn that describes the Spirit filling the church, and that's what happens to us. It happens to us on Sundays. It happens every day. So as you sing, I want you to experience this song and just Feel it, enjoy it, sing, put your hands up. Uh, let the wind blow through this place. So let us sing together.
Here we go. Amen. So glad that you are here to worship today. Thank you again for worshiping online. Those of you who have joined us uh, after the service, please come out and welcome David and Elizabeth here. Uh, there is the harvest table. There's um, a, a display about Vacation Bible School, how to get involved. And um, seems like there's something else out there. 
Is that it? Yes. VBS. I think I just said oh, you that. You said get everybody involved. Yeah, VBS. Okay. Okay. Have Harvest Table. Harvest yes. Table. Okay. Um, Sorry. Again, thank you for being here. Um, let's pray. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here today, for guiding us, directing us uh, every day of our lives. And so fill us and send us forth, ready to share your love, ready to make a difference, ready to help those in need. Go with us, we pray. Now may God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Amen. May you